Well, hello there and welcome back to my channel. It's Sarah with Brown Family Good. Today I have a video for you that is the meals we've had recently. So this is obviously not all the meals, but just a few that I have recorded over the last week or so. Things we're eating in the evening time and things I'm prepping for dinners and whatnot. So if you like this type of video, definitely give it a like. That way I know that, yeah, it's something you're into. So I'm starting off here with some pork carnitas. Basically, this is just slow cooked pork that I will shred and we will use this for several meals. So we ended up having this for about three different meals, two dinners and then something, I can't remember what we did for lunch with it, but we, we ate it for a lunch as well. This was a weekend day. So all of the peppers and everything that are going into this is stuff that is from my garden. So I have these peppers here that I'm cutting up. I put them first into my air fryer. Those are some homegrown Anaheim peppers, and I grew those in the garden this year. Obviously, they were fresh. I put them in the air fryer to roast up for a little while, about 20 minutes um, on 400, and they just get super tender. And you don't even have to worry about the skins on these because the skins are very thin on these homegrown peppers. There's no waxy stuff on them or anything like that either. So, and everything's going into the blender anyway, so no need to worry about that. I also have basically one whole head of garlic and then some ranchero sauce, which is from fresh tomatoes that I grew in the garden this year. And it is basically tomatoes, onions, peppers as well. So it has the same type of flavor profile. It's really, really good. It just is a little bit more flavorful than just a plain tomato sauce. So all of that is gonna go into the blender and basically make a salt and we'll season the meat throughout the cooking. And it turned out so well. This is the second time that I've made this. And honestly, you guys, I typically use a package mix or something, some kind of package seasoning when I do pulled pork or pork carnitas in the slow cooker. But this is so... The liquid that came from this pork once it was cooked in the slow cooker, once you skim the fat off of it, was so flavorful that I, I loved it. So the seasonings that I'm putting in there, that is some accent, basically that's MSG. I put some salt, I put some pepper, I put some oregano, and then I ended up going, looping back around after I got everything into the crock pot and putting some cumin in there because I forgot to put that in the uh, blender when I was putting everything else in. So I'm pretty sure that was all the seasonings that I put in here. One thing that I would add that I forgot to add or I was hesitant to add because I didn't want it to be too salty was some chicken bouillon. I wish I had added that because I really like that nor chicken bouillon in salsas and things of that nature. So it would have been really good in this too. It actually kind of needed that additional flavor, um, background flavor. So I would recommend adding some of that as well the next time. The way that I served this was in a couple of ways. The first night we had it on tacos. So I shredded the meat, I put some in a pan and I fried it up in the pan to get it good and crispy. And we had it on tacos that first night. And then the second night we had it in bowls. So I did some cilantro rice, I did some uh, beans and then the pork and whatever toppings you like on a bowl like that. So it turned out so great. It was yummy to eat on for several days in a row because it makes a whole lot at once. This next dish that I'm making here is a crisp. So I had some cherries that we got they were not the most flavorful cherries, I'll be honest. So we kind of slowed down on eating them and I really wanted to go ahead and use them up some kind of way. So I decided to figure out how I could put them into a dessert and I found a cherry crisp recipe, which I kind of wanted to bulk up the fruit a little bit. So I added some canned pineapple to it as well. This was delicious. The crisp topping, this is a gluten-free crisp topping, but basically, I mean, it's so good. You wouldn't know it was gluten-free. Basically, you just replace half of the flour in the crisp topping with oats, oat flour, essentially. So you saw I put those oats into the food processor, or in my case, I use my blender, and I just made sort of a flour out of them. And then you add all the same things as a regular crisp, some butter, some brown sugar, 
some salt, that type of stuff to make that crisp topping and it was delicious. In the base for the fruit, it's just the fruit and then I added about two tablespoons of cornstarch so that, that juice does not get, doesn't stay too thin in the bottom. You want it to kind of thicken up as it cooks and it did. I'm picking clumps of brown sugar out of this brown sugar because my brown sugar was so clumpy on this day. And you see that my hand is purple from cutting up all of those cherries. Oh my gosh. And it stayed stained until I washed my hands about 20 times while cooking dinner on this night. So this is all in one night that I'm making this stuff up, the cherry crisp, and then I'm making up some pork chops as well as some sweet potato fries. And I think I did a salad as well on this night, just a quick salad that I threw together. So I'm just, I just peel up my potatoes for the air fryer sweet potato fries. Now just go ahead and acknowledge that a sweet potato fry is never going to be as crispy and delicious as a regular potato fry, as a white potato fry. Let's just put that out there. They're not gonna be the same thing. They're two different animals. You're never gonna get a sweet potato fry that crispy without adding a lot of things on the exterior of the sweet potato fry. So they're good, yes, but they're not like crispy French fry, okay? Let's wrap our head around that first. <laughs> Just go ahead and set your mind to what it's gonna be. But they cook up really quickly and easily in the air fryer, so I do love to put them in there. You just put them on 400 for about 20 minutes, flip them around a couple of times, toss them, toss them, toss them, and then don't add salt until the very end because salt is gonna make them definitely not get any crispiness to them if you add it before they're finished cooking. So I just try to hedge my bets and don't add any salt to them until the very, very end. Want to make sure to get it as dry as possible because it's so hot outside i'm not grilling right now i'm not using the blackstone right now because it's like 100 degrees every single evening chops before i put them in the pan here just to give them the best chance at not steaming or anything like that and um, don't overcrowd your pan or anything either because you're going to have trouble with them just steaming and getting staying white and not getting any caramelization or color several shots of the dogs in here on this day because they were so funny. It's hot, as I said, I have I mentioned that, um, but they don't want to be out in it any more than we do <laughs> at this point, so they're just laying around everywhere. Here goes the blueberry crisp. It's done and I'm using my little tiny um, countertop oven at this point as well because heating up the big oven, I'm trying to avoid. So I only use it for very important things right now, but my small little countertop oven, it's also like an air fryer and all kinds of other things, but it works well if you have the right size dish to use it for. Next up, the pork chops here are about done, so I'm about ready to pull them out of the pan. And while I let those cool down for just a minute, I throw together a quick salad. It's just some shredded lettuce, some Parmesan cheese, some of my favorite uh, craisins, and then I literally, um, I actually shredded a carrot into it. I mean, not a carrot. I actually shredded a cucumber into the salad because I could not be bothered with taking out a cutting board and a knife again. So I wanted to use this Fuji apple dressing, which is one of our favorite dressings. So that's why I kind of just wanted to keep the salad light of other um, heartier things. <laughs> now we're on to a beef sirloin stir fry. 
So I'm gonna show you exactly how I make rice in an Instant Pot. I on this day, I was using a cup and a half of rice. So I just wash the rice really, really well to begin with and rinse it out until the water runs clear. And then it goes into the Instant Pot with an equal amount of water. So a cup and a half of rice, a cup and a half of, cup and a half of water, and it goes into the Instant Pot on high pressure for three minutes. And then you let it naturally release for 10 minutes before you take the top off. So three minutes of high pressure cooking and then 10 minutes of natural release and your rice is perfect. I'm also making this cucumber salad. Honestly, it's more like marinated cucumbers. It goes great with a stir fry. I'm gonna be honest, I forgot to eat it on this night because we waited about an hour after I cooked dinner to eat dinner because it was so hot. And completely forgot about my cucumber salad that I had made here. Have. You have got to try this. So I use some liquid aminos because it's gluten-free. You can use soy sauce if you're not worried about that type of thing. I also use sesame oil, rice vinegar, which I like the seasoned rice vinegar because it has a little bit of sweetness already to it. And then the most important ingredient is this chili crisp. That is the star of the show, 100%. So grab yourself some chili crisp the next time you're at the grocery store, or if you have to go to like an Asian food market, grab some there and you will not regret it. I have been adding it to everything. It goes perfect on the bowl. It goes perfect in these cucumbers. You will love it. So I do salt the cucumbers first and then let them sit to the side for just a few minutes and kind of kind of sweat for a few minutes. After that's happened, you've given them about 10 minutes to sit there and sweat, just rinse them off, and then you mix them up with the marinade after they're nice and rinsed off. This cucumber salad lasts in the refrigerator for a couple of days, although I will tell you it's the best immediately after you make it and probably within about 24 hours. When I go to cook this beef up, I cook it in small batches in the pan on a nice high temperature. Now it will kind of burn a little bit to the pan, so I clean the pan out after I cook the beef up and um, before I put the veggies in there. Otherwise, you're gonna have like a burned flavor in your vegetables. So I just cleaned it out, added some more oil, and then I put the vegetables in to steam for a little while. That's that stir fry mix that I buy frozen. It's really, really good. And to it, I just add some liquid aminos or soy sauce, whatever you have. And this Korean barbecue sauce is so good. Now, on a side note of gluten-freeness, that is not a gluten-free sauce. And I thought that I was okay with eating that because I have eaten it once, one other time in the past, but no, it actually did not make me feel very good. So I will not be eating it again, but it's, it's great. It's delicious if you are not gluten-free or needing to eat a gluten-free diet. Last night, I did something quick and easy. I really was going to make meatloaf, but I did not want to wait. Number two, I did not want to have the oven on for that long. I ended up making this into meatballs and it was perfect because I used them for my meal prep for my lunches for the next several days as well. Obviously, I just did basically a, a basic meatloaf recipe. I didn't even add a bunch of veggies or anything in because I was short on time, but we had some simple sides as well 
and then like a kale salad from a bag and some of that veggie rice that I get in the freezer section and it came together super fast and super delicious. I hope that you have enjoyed seeing some of the things that we've been eating over the last couple of weeks. Also, I hope you'll leave me a comment and say hi below. I would love to say hi back to you and let me know where you're watching from. It's been great to have you here and I will see you again real soon.